So it was only last week I showcased a mod version of a General Kenobi skin on the channel. And then lo and behold, DICE releases an official one in a December update we weren't supposed to be getting yesterday. Hi everybody. Hope your day's been a good one so far. So here it is. Personally, one of my favourite Obi-Wan Kenobi skins. The first time I ever watched the Clone Wars TV series, Obi-Wan was bossing around Anakin and Snips while wearing this very outfit. Pretty cool that all these years later, we now get to play with it in Battlefront 2. Admittedly, it does have quite a heavy price tag of 40,000 credits, but at least it's not as outrageous as the latest General Grievous skins, which drop with a whopping ridiculous price tag of 80k. I mean, consider the amount of time it would take to grind that out, and comparing it with the 71,000 it costs to unlock everything for Grievous on release day, I find this a little bit much, and a bit cheeky on Dice's behalf. Just just, just give it us for 10k and stop teasing us, you know. Saying all that, the new General Kenobi skin is extremely tasty and has already become my default Obi-Wan skin. I love the detail on the shoulder and seeing him wear the boots just tops it all off. Finally, we get a proper Clone Wars TV series outfit for Obi-Wan. Now we just need the Ben Kenobi skin and it will all be sweet as a nut. To be fair to them, DICE have done us proud with this update that we weren't supposed to be having. DICE were saying December was going to be a month far in blanks with no extra content. So it's really cool to see that they've gone back on the word and dropped this. And also because it's not just an excuse to roll out Obi-Wan's new skin. They've gone to the extent of tweaking a number of needy issues including such things as Obi-Wan's all-out push ability. I have to be honest... This was one of my main gripes when he was released. Sometimes, especially when playing heroes and villains, his all-out ability push just wouldn't work. It was weird and annoying, and I haven't had time to test out this patch, but I'm hoping this is a fix we've been waiting for. On top of this, they have also tweaked a number of other issues, along with some issues with defensive rush and other bits with other characters in the usual roundup of glitch fixes that we get with most of these patch updates. But one of the main other things that this patch has brought to the game that I'm most interested in is the incorporation of squad spawn in blast mode. I'm guessing after the test phase that they rolled out a while back, they decided it worked well and have incorporated it into the mode. And I'm personally a fan of it. Anything that gets you back into the action as fast as possible is a thumbs up in my book. Sure, it won't work all the time as with these team systems in other modes, but for the most part, it's a welcome addition. And to top it off, they've also dropped the spawn time from 10 seconds to 5 seconds, which should make blast mode just that extra bit manic. One last worthy thing of note in the patch update is what DICE are calling quality of life tweak, which basically is the new UI bar for the hero's stamina, which shows the amount of dodges a hero can make before they slip into a 100 years slumber, I'm assuming, or most likely have to wait a few seconds before it replenishes. So there we have it. A short, sweet rundown of the main tweaks and the new bits in the December Battlefront 2 update that we were never going to get. <laughs> I'm going to let this video play out with a little bit of gameplay from General Kenobi, but for now, really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Take it easy. And bye for now. There is no emotion, there is peace. I hope this isn't anything too unseemly. You need to stop and think things through. 